Peace, everybody. This is Tatiana Tarot. I'm hitting you up with another Tarot Energy Forecast. The first one of the year. Yes, Mazel Tov. Um, today is January 10th. Oh my God, I'm my concept of time is completely um, not stable. So today's the 10th. I'm going to be doing it into the 17th, a week. And I'll be pulling out a card for Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the weekend coming up. This is just to get us uh, clear on any energetic patterns we need to know, um, any particular things that we should be alerted on for our personal advancement, um, and just anything in general that spirit wants us to know for our betterment and more clarity in our lives. So this time around, I'm going to be using the World Spirit deck. I know some of you guys ask me what decks I use, and this one's really cool. Um, it's got a lot of eclectic photos, but it's also very um, ethnically diverse, which I love. Um, and it just gives it a different earthy feel to it, which is my element so I rather stick with that so let's see um, I want everybody to take a couple of deep breaths and center yourself inside of your body so that you're more feeling from your heart space instead of thinking and trying to over rationalize any information that your right brain your intuition your guides your ancestors and spirit might be um, throwing at you now during the session so take a deep breath Drop your consciousness from your head to your heart. And through the art of visualization, through your own personal projection skills, if you want, you could even do it through your third eye. Project your own juju and your energy onto the deck. Okay. And we're going to channel the best information, the highest good of all involved, Anything that spirit needs us to know for this week. Okay, we have some cards falling out. I'm not going to address that um, until we pull out our card for Monday and Tuesday. Bam. Wednesday and Thursday. Bam. E. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay, I'm just going to go with the vibe here. You don't really want to think too much. You want to be led by your own feelings and your intuitions and higher spirit. So before I even jump into the actual three card spread that I have for the week, and I like to address the cards that fly out or grab our attention. That is definitely spirit activity. That is definitely um, something that shouldn't be negated. That is a message even in the most subtle of ways that we should be paying attention to. So let's see what they want to say. Um, we have the Seeker of Swords. This is a really radical card. It talks about a lot of um, forward action energy, either receiving a lot of messages, even in an intuitive level, even in a subconscious level, there might be a lot of information floating back up to the surface for our awareness, be it, be it on um, others, other patterns, your personal patterns, your personal belief systems, you might be triggered to think of thoughts um, from your childhood that may interfere with the way you act and the way you um, interact with the world. It might be you observing somebody else's um, actions and energies and having that bring you some sort of message to your own. Um, from the stories that I've been hearing and the clients that I've been dealing with, a lot of people seem to be dealing with these uh, mirror projections of themselves or of habits that they've been kind of integrating into their own without realizing that it's not their own energy. So you should be just mindful of this. You don't necessarily have to take action on it. You don't necessarily have to just use your left brain and try to analyze everything. Things are being brought to your surface awareness just so that you can integrate that and just be more conscious of uh, what you are prone to do when you're not awake. And what are some habits and behaviors and patterns that you may have subconsciously absorbed from other people that are not necessarily yours, even in terms of like insecurity, doubt, fears, um, inadequacy, lack of self-worth. You might be learning that, hey, I, I kind of picked this up from my mom or I kind of picked this up from my brother along the way or I had this thought when I was four or six and now I see how it's affecting me now in my adulthood. Um... The Secret of Swords um, not only pertains to these important messages, but it could be receiving that information towards the manifestation that 
uh, the manifestations that we've been projecting out there. If you want a new job, if you've been particularly taking a new route in your life, you've been shifting your perspective in some way, maybe the universe is giving you personal signs and symbols that can allude that you're on the right path, you're doing the right thing, or it can also sharpen your awareness to be more mentally organized and structured um, it can be alerting us to pay attention to the way we communicate because the swords deals with the mental realm. It deals with air, communication, thought forms, um, uh, como se dice, eh, inspiration, creativity, things that are intangible, things that are things of, of the spirit, essentially. So you are to be more spiritually inclined within Monday and Tuesday. Really tune in. Um insights and messages may not jump in front of your face for your awareness. They might be very subtle. So that might require for you to um, still yourself to slow down so you can catch up to those messages, you know, but definitely it does show some sort of progression on the communication field. You may be feeling inspired to tell someone your truth, or you may be feeling inspired to, um, be more creatively bold. You might be writing a screen print, uh, screenplay and you don't even know how to write one or you might want to become a poet and express yourself that way but you've never done it before. It doesn't matter if you've done it before or not. If that's what your spirit is calling you to do, then you shouldn't block that sort of expression because it is manifesting itself for a reason. So just be conscious of the way that the element of air is traveling through your life and traveling through your spirit and your own personal um, experiences. And um, take notes, take mental notes, or take physical notes. This is uh, Monday and Tuesday are heavy with mental activity, um, communication and all that. So it wouldn't be too far-fetched for you to write things down or to store them in some sort of memory keeping. Um, the, the, oh my God, we wasn't even talking about Monday and Tuesday because these are the cards that fell out. So disregard those days. On a general basis, these are the two cards that came out from Spirit. So in, in general for this whole week, you should be keeping that as a theme that, that can pop up. Um, the chariot shows that you're very ambitious, you're very bold, you're very action-oriented. This is a fast card. When you're in a chariot, you're traveling towards a singular um, destination, a lasered focus. So this can really show that you're ready to conquer what's yours and you're, you're willing to put in the work, okay? Because it's not always going to be um, an easy thing. Um, I don't always necessarily enjoy reading tarot cards. Sometimes I feel like I'm pulling teeth out of my mouth. Sometimes I don't really feel necessarily inspired, but I just have to go with the consistency that I've been going through. And so this kind of um, encourages you to keep on moving forward, to find, um, to find opportunity in places that may not readily uh, present themselves. You need to kind of make your own life and not be afraid to grab what is yours. Utilize the resources around you or open up your mind so you can reconceptualize what is of use and what is not of use. Um, this might even bring into your life the theme of recycling. Uh, what, how can I recycle my garbage, be it emotional garbage, be it something that you think is, is not of value. You have the power to turn that around and see the flip side and see how it can benefit you so you can advance to the finish line. The thing about the chariot is that we need to be conscious that we're not perpetually on the go, that we give ourselves that, that amount of space to slow down and really internalize the messages that are being thrown at us. Okay, but we may also being uh, we excuse me we may also be receiving the messages to go ahead take that leap and not be afraid and and to conquer what is ours because no one else is going to create your life except for yourself so you have to be willing to take it and the chariot does necessarily um, show that you are ready and you're more than capable of doing it you have a lot strength and experience from the past. Um, and it's the beginning of the new year, so that is always a, a motivating force for us to just start off um, under the right pretext. So now let's actually get into the week with the cards I pulled out. Monday and Tuesday, we have 
The Seeker of Cups. So we're getting a lot of seeking here this week, okay? Seeking who we are on an individual scale. Stopping the comparisons and stopping the judgment. Allowing people their space, granting them their space to be who they are because that is their free will. But also being conscious of when we're triggered to criticize that, judge that, or be bothered by that. Why is that happening to us? And do we need to enforce boundaries or inside of ourselves? And do we also need to place boundaries to show to other people that we need our space too? Um, the secret of cups is romance. Um, this can be uh, romantic energy in general. This can be romantic energy to yourself. Um, your Ruben goddess, um, Oshun, has a lot of that fluidity, water, and she, you know, goes with the flow, but she always has these positive intentions to bring beauty, wealth, and luxury into the lives of other people because she inherently um, embodies that and has the belief system that she is all of these characteristics. So it brings into play, um, where are you getting that sort of nutrient? Where are you getting your love? Where are you receiving your love? Where, What areas in your life do you need more love? Or maybe you need to spread the message of love. Um, you know, when we ask for something, we must be willing to give it as well because there is a, a reciprocal energy exchange going on, the law of the universe, cause and effect. So if you want love, you need to give love, especially to yourself. Um, the seeker of cups, oh, my ring got caught on. Excuse me. The seeker of cups is a lot of vulnerability. You can be dealing with a lot of vulnerable issues, particularly at this time in your life. You could be dealing with um, emotional things that maybe you haven't fully healed from 2005, or this could be in a different context. This could be emotion and creativity that's flowing overboard and you need a vessel to capture it in. So, like I said before, um, because this week is so heavy on communication and the element of air, it wouldn't be too far-fetched for you to write down these these ideas, especially yesterday. Yesterday was the new moon, eh, the new moon in Capricorn. So, this is about always perpetually um, elevating, raising the bar for yourself and not necessarily comparing to other people because they have their own agendas and their own path. That has nothing to do with you. You need to raise the bar for yourself and set different standards that you are able to follow up on and not feel like a failure if you don't. Um, that's also something that might be coming up for people. Um, their wounds. The seeker of cups is also a messenger and you may be getting messages in terms of what areas in your life you need to be more vulnerable in, what areas in your life needs more healing, what areas in your life need, need more love. But at the same time, you know, you have the positive and you have the negative. You may be receiving a lot of unexpected gifts from people, even in terms of um, vocal compliments. Uh, verbal compliments, uh, written compliments, anything. Um, just be receptive of the energy of love and what that particularly means to you because Monday and Tuesday is a great time for healing. Um, and when you're dealing with water, you don't really want to resist what is being presented to you. You want to let it flow and let it marinate within your spirit so you can at some point really... Uh, get to the root of what is going on and why it's happening. But in order to do that, sometimes we need to kick our left brain out. And our left brain is busy analyzing all the details that our right brain can just necessarily pick up and understand instantaneously, like your intuition and your own um, sense of, of higher wisdom. Um, now, for Wednesday and Thursday is the Six of Wands. And the Six of Wands is a pretty active card. It speaks of victory. It speaks of a higher purpose that you're set out to, to follow up on. Um, I feel like within this particular time, this is a year for everyone to truly be independent or to discover what that independence means. Uh, a lot of people may be on a route to being their own entrepreneurs or getting into a new field or getting into a new passion or a hobby that they've always stifled. Um, go with it. You carry the torch. You carry the torch of enlightenment and illumination inside of yourself. You owe it to yourself to honor this calling, although it might not present itself 
to be completely comprehensive at once, you kind of feel some sort of longing and you um, feel responsible to kind of follow up on that from a moment to moment or a day to day basis. So the six of wands can represent a lot of harmony and, a, and perhaps finding a community, finding a tribe or, or resonating with a group of people, a group of friends that really connect with your mission or can give you a lot of clarity and insight to what your mission is if you particularly have one. Um, it does talk about a sense of being accepted, embraced for your individuality and who you are and respecting other people for the same reason. Um, we can all be different, but we can all maintain that same level of respect and understanding uh, and to see how our differences contribute to the whole and what we can create from them on an artistic and um, social standpoint. standpoint. Um, the Six of Wands can be a reunion of sorts. You may be linking up with someone on the physical plane but also what happens on the physical also manifests in the spiritual and the energetic. So this can be finding resonance, um, resonance with your inner child, linking up with an old aspect of yourself that you might have lost touch with. Um, so this is actually a very, I would say it's a very cozy, nurturing time Wednesday and Thursday. Um, you might be reminiscing over... <laughs> reminiscent oh my god is that even a real word over over or things that you've forgotten about um maybe situations that you've left behind in the past that you thought were resolved but are coming back to uh remind you of a particular purpose or remind you of a path that you've decided to take on or a decision you've decided to to embark upon and 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 what the results of that are Things are looking much more prosperous for you, but it shows that there's a lot of activity this week because we are we're forward motion oriented, okay? And we should always be looking um, progressively ahead and not behind because we're losing time by doing that. So the last card for the weekend, oh my God, all this higher power stuff, oof, um, is the Hierophant. And the Hierophants can represent authoritative power, hierarchy, um, someone establishing structure for you, but you making the decision that you are going to redefine your reality for yourself, or not redefine, but you're actually going to define all the details and what they mean to you. What is positive for one person is not necessarily positive for another person. So all definitions don't necessarily apply to you. You need to find what's justified for your own spirit and what aligns with your own nature, your own juju, your own energy. Um, the Hierophant... <laughs> um, it can represent you breaking out of some sort of um, control freak habit. It can it can result in you seemingly being lazy, but really in reality, this could be you just falling back and going with the flow. Because not everything needs um, to be action oriented. Not everything needs to have a reaction. Rather, you might need to marinate on what kind of reaction you want to have in particular circumstances in your life or particular relationships. Um, this brings up the theme of relationships, how you choose to relate to other people, especially authoritative figures, and how you can embody more um, autonomy in your life, how you can embody more accountability and responsibility so that you don't feel like you're giving your power away to these institutions, to your mother, to your sister, to your friends, to particular dramas, to particular habits and cycles in your life that are no longer feeding you, that are no longer nurturing your spirit. This is very important to be conscious of in the weekends. This might inspire you if you don't necessarily have an answer, if you're particularly confused at a crossroads it might inspire you to do further research on spiritual philosophies or the way other people are living their lives it might inspire you to actually open up and be vulnerable to strangers just so that you can find some middle point of relation and connection with them 
Um, so I would say for this particularly, uh, for this particular week, ground yourself, ground yourself in writing, put things down, write a to-do list, make sure that you know the direction that you're going on. But by all means, listen to your spirit. If you want to do something, go ahead and do it. Start making moves. Don't wait another week. Don't wait until you have the proper resources. Um, if you're already receiving that divine inspiration to take action on something, that is because the universe and the high, higher spirit or whatever source it is um, knows that you already have what it takes at this present moment to cultivate that inside of yourself. So you just need to honor that and start thinking from a creative standpoint, uh, standpoint instead of from a limiting context. Um, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm yapping too long. It's already 20 minutes. I would not watch this. Um, if you want a reading, if you're interested in any readings, I do email tarot readings. I do in-person readings in Brooklyn. And I'm also accessible via Skype, FaceTime, and phone. Um, to book a session, you could go to my website, www.myurbanillumination.com. Um, should you have any questions, curious, curiosities, or um, just want to chat, you can send me an email and be patient because I get a lot of them. And um, I hope you guys are blessed. You know, keep your head straight, keep yourself grounded, and much peace to you. Ashe. Ciao, bacalao.